What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Devin and I, she's behind the camera, are getting out tonight with a bait you haven't seen us throw very often. I've, in fact, never really thrown it, never gotten any catches on it, and we're going to give our first impression slash review of the one and only Mega Bass Dark Sleeper. The things look ferocious, devastating. They have a hook that is actually tucked away inside these top fins so you can get through some cover. And you almost fish it, I hear, like a Texas rig or a jig, keeping bottom contact. Summertime, we're gonna try and find some uh, deep pockets. We're gonna just we're gonna chunk, we're gonna chunk them around the bank too. We'll see what happens. We got a couple different juicy colors. Uh, we've got more of the naturals tied on for you folks. I know maybe you saw that pink and yellow thinking, I don't know if I'd throw that. Well, never fear. We got almost like a clear minnow shad color right here. Little chartreuse stripe on it. We also have this natural color, which Devin's caught a couple fish on already. Almost like a, a bass pattern, but really resembles quite a few different styles of fish that could be swimming around in here that these bass like to eat. And uh, we're just gonna see if we can't catch a couple fish tonight before sunset. We got about an hour and a half to do so. A uh, little bit more about the gear. Floral carbon line is what we're rocking. Literally, it's just a one rod, one reel mission tonight. We got the pliers and the scale on deck just in case we link up with something decent. And uh, that's that, let's get to fishing. All right, y'all, water looks pretty clear, so these natural colors should do quite well. I'm gonna hit this little corner pocket See if there's anything hanging out over here. So I know in this pond there's some rock over here and this seems to be working through it quite well. Fish impressions bouncing along the bottom. Oh, oh, I thought I might've had a bite and that's exactly why you need to keep your line tight. You literally need to crank down a little bit, make sure there's no slack and feel out those bites. Oh, and those rocks, wow, this is feeling good, man. This is feeling real basilicious. Oh wow, this thing looks good swimming too. Oh man, okay, I'm starting to like this thing. Very versatile. Cruising along the bottom. And he just looks like he's popping along, barely making it. Easy target for a bass or swim it and get a bite. Okay, they want it on the move. That will do. That did not take very long at all, guys, and that's a sizable bass. Swimming it. Okay, <laughs> look at that. And I was almost, you, got, you, you know, you gotta wonder when you see that hook recessed, look at that, oh my gosh, he's pinned. Wow, hook has really got him. That's why we brought the pliers too, because you never know when you'll hook him a little too good and can't hardly get it out. Guys, so literally the first cast I swam it after I brought it in that last retrieve and saw it's actually got a pretty good kick. I was just thinking fish this thing on the bottom, but it is so versatile. You can literally treat this like a, uh, almost like a crankbait or a chatterbait, very weedless because that hook is behind that top fin as opposed to like a chatterbait where it would be exposed or a crankbait where you've got treble hooks so you can fish this in quite a few more areas, especially where there's more grass. You saw I picked up a little on one of those casts. Let me get this guy back in the water real fast and we'll tell you more. So cool. And uh, and yeah, it's got it's got a, a very good kick, like I said. Just super simple. You don't have to, you know, if you have a tr if you have a chatterbait, you got to add a trailer. I don't know why I'm comparing this to a chatterbait. There's a lot of different like swim baits I could compare this to, but the thing is, I'm just thinking of uh, easy confidence baits when you get started with fishing. Something like a dark sleeper is only something I recently uh, heard about, and the thing is kicking butt. So first cast on that slow retrieve, got a fish, and you know I had cast it over there a handful of times and not got anything. So sometimes you just got hit too. Devin just got hit, man, on the move. I didn't really detect the bite right off the bat. I was curious if I had a fish, and then it started swimming to the left. So I was bringing the dark sleeper back in, and as I'm bringing it straight back in, I see it going to the left, and I knew at that point I had a fish. I was curious if I had a bite, but it was just a subtle, subtle little weight, and it was taking it right away. And so that's when you know, crank down, set that hook. I'm gonna swim them back through here again. I am not convinced. Oh my God, that was rock. I am not convinced there's not another one over here. Oh, and I just spooked a bunch of minnows. I can see a lot of action on the top as I cruise through there. So there's bait over here. And that is probably exactly why we got that hit. That bass might have literally just been cruising in here to gobble up some of this bait and then cruising back out to the depths. It's getting later in the day. They're coming in to feed. They might just be kind of cruising in and out of this little zone right here in this corner where they know that bait's gonna be at. And that's kind of what I just keyed in on with that last cast. So that bass might not have actually been back here that whole time. Stuttering again, cause I thought I got another bite. This thing just sinks fairly quickly, which I think is good. Um, so what had happened was I was at the bottom and I was hitting a couple rocks. And so I thought maybe it was a bite and you just gotta check yourself and kind of, uh, <laughs> again, keep that line tight and just kind of double check there. It has a weight in the nose and that is fantastic because what's happening is he's gonna be down on the bottom. He's gonna just fall straight down to the bottom, tail a kicking, 
and he's an easy target for the bass to pick up off the bottom. And if you want to reel him in, because it's got some decent weight, I... It's 3.8 ounce. It's 3.8? Yeah. Yep. Are you on? I'm on. Oh, I think she's got a good one, guys, too. This one's bigger than the one I caught for sure. Oh my gosh. Come here. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. What the heck? They don't even care about the color. They just like the dark sleeper. Yeah, they do. Look at that. I'm sitting over here listening to Weston talk about the size of the the uh, weight in the dark sleeper's uh, mouth, and it's a 3 8 ounce if you guys are interested. But look at that. Good fish, too, guys. Good thing you brought those pliers because I'm going to need them. Oh, there we go. Guys, one last look at that fish. What a freaking beaut. Probably two and a half, huh? Healthy fish, totally slammed that, but I think what Weston's talking about, let's get him in the water. I haven't caught a pond fish and I don't even know how long. <laughs> right, we've been out on the boat. Since Bye, bud. <laughs> ah! I used this the other night when we were out fishing on the boat when we were fishing the other night and I got my first couple catches with it so I was a little bit more confident probably going into it uh, than Western was being his first time using it but oh I just got smacked <laughs> jeez I almost smacked you in the face too getting munched but uh, these fish are seeming like they're on fire so I'm gonna go ahead get this back in the water but tell them what you I just had another one Oh my gosh. Tell me, geez, what's going on? <laughs> well, I just missed two bites in two seconds. Oh, Got him. Yeah. There we go, number three. Uh, I don't think so. Might be small, might be big. Oh, it's decent. He's decent. He's all right. Nope, you ain't getting off that thing, man. Oh, that's a good one. That's three and a half or something. Whoo! Okay, boys, the bigs will hit the dark sleeper. Ooh, boys. Oh my gosh, this thing is doing work tonight. Look at that fatty. I mean, that's a three pounder. I don't know if he's three and a half. I guess I'll put him on the scale for you guys. Let's see what this thing's capable of, man. What is it catching us? Nah, I'm sure it's three. Don't even lie. Oh, quit it. Quit it. 2.99, that's how you get gypped at the ponds, boys. See, here's how I look at it. If he actually ate this fish, he'd be a three pounder. So, I'm calling him three. We will see you, bud. Sick. Oh, she's got one. Woo, smoking him. <laughs> I think Devin neglected to hit the record button on that one, y'all, but uh, needless to say, she just got the fourth fish. It was literally as soon as I put that one back in the water. <laughs> Ooh. He's got it. First one off the bottom. Jigging it. <laughs> oh, boys. I mean, this thing's tearing them up. Okay, there we go. That's working it like my buddies tell me. I literally cast it out to the center. Who knows the depth out there? I want to say it's probably at least five feet though. I mean, it took a second for it to hit bottom. As Soon as it hit bottom, doink. Felt that little bop, set that hook, man. But you saw me kind of tighten it down, crank it down, really reeling that slack. So when you got that drive, you're definitely like more likely to pin that fish, bring him home. Alrighty then, bud. We'll see you later. Thank you, sir. Let's go. Hey, okay. Gotta say, man, I like this thing because of its versatility. Like, you can fish this on the bottom just fine, and it's gonna look like a dying fish that these bass are eating. You can also swim it, and you can get them when they are really in the mood for something uh, running from them. I mean, this is just perfect. And the thing is, it's tough to get skunked. You hear a lot of good things about a small profile swim bait. There's just so many things in the water that resemble this profile that these fish are eating. Now, you go ahead and pick whichever color, you think looks the closest to what type of bait the bass are eating in your ponds or in your lakes. But I mean, aside from the color, I, I mean, this just looks like a, a tasty treat to a bass in my opinion. And uh, you don't even have to take my word for it. You can take their word because they've been eating it tonight. So that is just, I mean, I'm telling you what, you want to carry one bait to a pond like we're doing tonight? This thing seems so perfect. I can swim it through all this brush right here and then I can turn right around and I can fish it like a Texas rig right here on the edge of the brush. I can just work it slow and see if the bass are hanging out by the cover. And I mean, I'm telling you what, 
that's something you can't do with a lot of baits. Now, I won't lie, I just got snagged. <laughs> but but that's not the point, man. That's not the point. <laughs> the thing's pretty versatile. All right, let me get that free. Let's try that again. Yeah, you can fish it like a Texas rig right on the edge of the cover. Well, I'm not going to say you won't get snagged or lose one of these, but I'm not going to say you won't get snagged with a chatterbait or a crankbait or anything else you love to throw in a pond that you might not also want to fish off the bottom like this thing because it makes so much sense to buy the old mega bass. By the way, if you guys want to pick these up, I'll link them down in the description. Forget where we bought them. <laughs> you want to know where you can buy them. I'm going to put those things down there for you guys so that you can pick these things up. Look in the pinned comment or just at the top of the description and you will find these mega bass dark sleepers, man. I'm going to make sure you're taken care of. And I appreciate you guys for watching. If you've actually uh, learned anything from this video so far, gotten any value, please feel free to hit that like button or even subscribe. And uh, if not, maybe just share this with a friend who you think is into fishing and would enjoy the video. So appreciate you guys. Let's continue along the bank here. Nice little overhanging tree. This could be good. New spot. I'm going to have to stock up on these. It's my new favorite bait. <laughs> I texted until I said new favorite bait and sent him a picture of the big one. <laughs> water's definitely low here. Usually there's water flowing all the way down here into that lower pond. Oh, well, I guess that's what's going on. Wow. You know what? I wonder if they killed the grass. No, because there's a lot over there. Okay, first couple casts. That's a good one. First few casts of the next pond, guys. They don't care what area you are in. They're going to hit it, man. This thing. This is nuts. Sure. All right, buddy. We'll see you. He's cruising slow. Guys, as much as I want to switch colors and showcase something different, I just don't want to put this thing down. I think that's four fish and a uh, half hour to 45 minute time span from the very first bite, which, you know, I'm not setting records out here, but I feel pretty good about it. There we go. There we go. Come here, bud. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I slowed it down a little bit as I was getting closer to that grass line. Uh, I was swimming it in and then whenever I started to get closer to the grass, I, I stopped and I started letting it fall. Or I, yeah, changed it up. Might be a little tricky letting this guy go. I have to just come over here and do a little tossy toss. All right, ready as gently as possible. Oh, he's gold. There you go. See, bye bye. Yo, we are calling it on a good note. I mean, we got some fish and quick on this thing. What a session at the ponds. You guys have been asking me about pond stuff too. We've been hitting the boats and kayaks a lot lately and having a lot of fun doing it. And I know you guys enjoy that content, but I don't want to divvy away from how we got started, right? The bank fishing, man. Devin and I love it so much. And I actually outfished her tonight. Thank goodness, because she outfishes me every single day of the week. It's three to three, but I mean, I caught the bigger fish. Yeah, definitely. I outfished you. No denying, guys, in the comments, definitely I outfished her, right? Did I, did I outfish her or did I not? Yeah, but I was in this video, so you actually caught fish. Uh, uh, she just said, uh. All right, guys, whether I outfished her or not is up to you guys. But let me just tell you what, these things absolutely slay, no matter who was throwing them. Wow, uh, that's all I got to say. I, I will tell you, he's missing an eye now. I think I might have mentioned that in the video, but if I didn't, he is, uh, he's eyeless on one side, which is no problem. Adds a little character. Don't think you gotta throw these things away just because you lose an eye. It's gonna happen. Also, we had a little bit of a nose blow out, but there's a way to fix that. You guys can save these baits, man. Use Mend It. You absolutely have got to get you some of this soft plastic glue. I'll also leave it down in the description for y'all so that you can save these baits because what happens is they get torn up right here as you're setting the hook and you're driving it over cover and this thing's bashing up against trees and rocks and all that stuff. It's gonna get torn up. It's just the name of the game. So. Have it looking fresh, like new, with some soft plastic glue made specifically for baits. And you can keep these things around in your tackle box for a long time without having to toss them out, man. I'm talking about even if you were to chop a tail off. I've literally used Mendit to put a tail back together. We've had baits break in half because of big bass. Not these, not these, by the way. Other soft plastic baits that have gotten absolutely destroyed from these bass. You can put them back together with this stuff, so I can't talk highly enough of it, and that's why I'm rambling on and telling you you should get some. Now, when it comes to the colors, we threw like two out of 10 or more color schemes that you can get these in. So I highly recommend 
you check these things out online and get you your favorite color. One thing I like about these so much is that a lot of people are intimidated to get into swim baits. Uh, not necessarily the small ones, sometimes those bigger swim baits, but this can get you into the swim bait game. And the thing is they're affordable and they're already all put together. What do I mean? You tie your knot and you fish it. That's what I really dig about these is how simple they are. See now a lot of times you've got to go get you a hook. Maybe you get a weighted belly hook or maybe you get an underspin or maybe you get, there's a bunch of different stuff. Like do I get twist lock? What do I do to throw just a swim bait that I get out of the bag? Well, this has got everything attached and ready to go. It's got the weight in there that you need. It's got the hook on top, right? It's hidden so the bass don't see it. No more worrying about what size swim bait you need on what size and weight hook because you don't have to pair them up. It's all done for you. If you get the one ounce size, it's gonna have a bigger profile. If you get the quarter ounce size, it's gonna have a smaller profile. So literally it's ready to rig up and hit the water. They do offer these things in a lot of different sizes, man. I mean, I think it starts off at a quarter ounce, which if I'm not mistaken is like 2.4 inches in length. And then it goes up to these higher uh, quarter and half. And uh, this is a 3 8 ounce actually and it is a three inch if I'm not mistaken. So they go all the way up to I think one ounce. I would say go with something like the quarter if you have just grass almost to the surface or you're fishing smaller bodies of water and you wanna creep that thing uh, pretty close to the top of the water column. You don't want it to sink very low or you wanna finesse it down and you're just going for a smaller bait, maybe try and get more bites even than one of these three inches would and that is very common as well. Or maybe let's say it's winter time and you need a slower fall. You want just a more subtle kick, right? Then that is when I would go with that smaller size. I think this 3 8 size is a fantastic all around. I mean, this is this thing. I was really, I was really enjoying this specific weight. Now, the one ounce, you might toss that out on some lakes and whatnot. When you're trying to really get down deep, you're trying to go down 15, 20 feet and fish almost like a jig, right? You'd get down there and you just fish some humps and ledges, different things of that nature. Summertime, right? That's right here, right now. Drop one of these down there. They're, they're chasing fish. You know what they're down there eating. So throw them something that they're gonna to wanna to eat, man. So an awesome video. I hope you guys really got a lot out of it and we cannot wait to see you on tomorrow's episode. I know I'm getting this one up late. That's just how it goes, man. Sometimes I can't edit these things until we get done filming them. We filmed two, uh, we actually filmed two videos today. That's besides the point. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.